Good people, today we get a few microphones to test that range in price and features. We have both dynamic and condenser microphones, XLR and USB-C, and of course I'll be including two of my favorite and most used microphones, the Wave 3 from Elgato because of its convenience on my desktop and the Blue Amber because it just sounds absolutely wonderful for my voice. And I'm also finally starting to play around with dynamic microphones, which are really good for vocals that require actual sound pressure waves to detect sound and therefore it's really good for untreated rooms because you know all the echoes and stuff might not necessarily pass into the dynamic microphone versus condenser microphones which are a lot more sensitive so really good for high frequency and the clear vocal stuff and of course instrument recording as well. So microphone wise, I got the new VO7U kit from Deity in white, a dynamic mic that I'm definitely keeping. The new Razer stuff with the Siren V2X condenser that absolutely surprised me. And the V2 Pro that is a dynamic mic for slightly more money, but still with that horrible bass. HyperX just launched the Procast XLR condenser that is super well reviewed and their budget mic, the Duocast with USB-C connection and two recording patterns for an affordable 99. The Blue Sona is my most expensive mic here that is active dynamic, so it actually requires phantom power because of the built-in amplifier. And despite the fossil connection with the micro USB, I still think the Yeti X sounds excellent, although fairly expensive. The Elgato Wave DX is an affordable XLR dynamic microphone. I'm really curious to hear which I like more versus my Wave 3. Another well-rated dynamic mic in here is the Biodynamic M70 Pro X with its massive shock mount. The Cougar Screamer X has got to be the worst name ever, but it has built-in noise reduction, four recording patterns and RGB of course. You can throw that one out right away though. And lastly, we have the late to the party NZXT Capsule Mini, the cheapest condenser mic in here with a surprising twist. Now, just for fun, I recorded some sound samples, sent it off to the team to have this blind test experiment to let me know which microphone sounds best to their ears. Not surprisingly, Eber's choice was the Blue Amber, the HyperX Procast, and a very surprising pick in there with the Siren V2X. You'll hear why the V2X is in there later. But Michael also picked the HyperX Procast and including the Deity VO7U because it's a dynamic microphone, sounds well for my voice, and the Wave 3 because it's so nicely balanced. Now when it comes to microphones, my rule of thumb is always speaking at off angle about this distance away from the microphone, regardless if it's a condenser or a dynamic. Uh, then we also are not necessarily in a treated space, but I'm looking in a direction where I get the least amount of echo when I'm doing these recordings. Also microphones have different texture and vocal pickup for different voices, so regardless of how the sound for me, if you like it or not, just keep in mind it will sound different for your voice. I mean, this new fan is something else, with regular and reverse models available to create that clean look without compromising the airflow direction, like these bottom fans are set to intake but look like the rest of the fans on the enclosure. It's brilliant. They cleverly daisy chain with snap-on bridges and all these bits cover up the uglies so you never have to worry about the looks or the cable management as it's just one cable. This is what the premium dirge 30mm performance fan should look like the new Fantix D30. All right, so to set the stage, this is the Wave 3 microphone from Elgato. It's been my go-to daily microphone for all types of voiceover recordings on calls and etc. It is a USB-C microphone. I do love the modularity and all the controls that you get right from uh, the front of the microphone. So I don't need to necessarily have anything running in the background for software to modulate its gain, the headphone output, the, the mixing as well. And it has a very convenient tap to mute functionality at the top. This is a condenser microphone, so if you are trying to avoid any of the room noise, trying to suppress anything in the background, you have to reduce the gain, be very close to the microphone. And I do like the tonal characteristics of this microphone that's kind of neutral. It's like that really nice balance between having just the right amount of bass for my voice, but also this is being a condenser. Anything that you do in the background is going to be picked up unless you apply some sort of compression or the noise gates, maybe noise reduction in the software in the post-production or an OBS, for example, that's uh, fairly easy to do. But this is 
the Wave 3. Then we have the Blue Amber microphone. I love this XLR microphone. It's only $99. It picks up my voice beautifully in terms of the richness and the fullness and all the texture, both on the lower end and the high end. I love recording my guitar with this microphone in particular. It just makes it sound so lively and full. But also being a condenser microphone, it doesn't do such a good job in terms of like, you know, canceling out the background noise. It does a better job than the Wave 3, but that also could be determined by the levels. But in terms of recording distance, I'm trying to do this from all the microphones so that it's consistent. Next up, we have the HyperX Procast. I'm very excited to hear how this sounds in your ears because it's very well reviewed. It's quite expensive, $249. It is an XLR condenser microphone, requires 48 volt fan to power. It has this built-in pop filter inside the actual like body and it also has a removable metal pop filter for additional plosive protection. On the actual body, we have an 80 Hertz switchable low pass filter. So if you want to cut out on some of those low hum frequencies, that's awesome. And we also have a negative 10 dB pad to just lower the sensitivity of the microphone. I love the visuals of it too. It's very HyperX, but kind of leading towards that professional arena. In terms of background compression with keystrokes, this is how that sounds while I'm speaking and typing. And the keyboard is, I mean, it's like basically right behind the microphones. So not ideal scenario, but we can still hear how they do a good job. And also, um, you know, my room is not fully treated for sound protection and also have a window open to give me a little bit more ambient noise. Uh, and yeah, what do you guys think of the new HyperX Procast. Moving on to a microphone that I was really excited to hear, but it sounds a little too dark. This is the Blue Sona. This is probably the most expensive at $350 in this entire roundup. But being a dynamic microphone, the closer you are, the better the projection is. And so it will help to clear out any room noise, any ambient noise, etc. So that's the benefit of a dynamic microphone. It's also really good for vocals as long as you dial in your sensitivity right. I do love the included red pop filter. You can also swap out for the black one. Not only is this good for visuals, but apparently for hygiene as well, if you want to swap it out between guests. Thoughtful, all right, I like it. I love the physical characteristics of this microphone. So the built-in shock mount, the XLR at the back, this is just basically kind of like a plug and go situation. No need to set up anything additionally. You speak exactly into the front. You know, you won't be able to confuse this of trying to speak it from the sides because that's not how the body is positioned. Being a dynamic microphone, let's see how it cancels out all the keyboard strokes in the background. But I will say this is recording in the super cardioid pattern, which I believe has a slightly larger cone behind the microphone. Let me know what you think of the blue Sona, but I think for my voice, I prefer something slightly more brighter and something a bit more lively. Now, apparently this thing also has a removable magnetic plate right behind the microphone where we have the presence dial. So that right now has been enabled and hopefully the deadness that I was feeling with the previous recording is back. So hopefully the presence emphasizes a slightly more high end, but we also have a low pass filter for those, uh, you know, low frequency hums that disappear in my space. It's not necessary. I don't have like an AC running or anything humming in the background, but now with this microphone, I think the blue Sona sounds pretty decent, especially with that presence filter. What do you guys think? The Elgato Wave DX is Next. I'm actually using the entire ecosystem minus the software for all the Elgato. So the Elgato XLR cable, the Wave DX microphone, and the Wave XLR uh, interface for this recording. It does have a built in pop filter, but as with any microphone, you should always still record on a slight angle, even for dynamic microphones that have to be really close to your mouth. But the Wave DX, in terms of the physical, it's super simple. You can also uh, change the position of the boom arm onto the other side, and this logo can go on the other side. It's also rotatable, just pop it off. And uh, overall, it's like very simple, clean package, you know? Price-wise, it's $99, so still very affordable. Although I would still gravitate towards the Blue Amber for $99 in the XLR space. Although this is dynamic, that one's a condenser. So let me know which one sounds best to your ears. And also being dynamic, let's see how it does in terms of noise suppression with keyboard strokes at the right behind the microphone. And I have configured the sensitivity to peak between negative 12 and minus six for all the microphones. So, 
we'll see which one does the best in terms of that noise suppression with keyboard strokes in the background. But the Wave DX, what do you guys think? And the last XLR microphone in this roundup is the Biodynamics M70 Pro X. This is a dynamic microphone. It is very targeted towards like vocals and recordings and being very center focused. And so I'm excited to hear what this uh, sounds like. And of course, just do a quick test for the keyboard strokes and being dynamic, it should hopefully cancel out most of the stuff that's happening right behind it. But I mean, the keyboard is very close to all the microphones. So yeah, it's gonna be a nice fun challenge. Also forgot to mention this microphone comes with its own dedicated pop filter, which is necessary because you want to be as close as possible to this dynamic microphone because the sound signature is very much biodynamic. It's very bright, it's sibilant, and it's, it's harsh a little bit for my voice in particular. So the closer I get and you know, making sure my sensitivity is all good, this microphone sound starts to sound really good. Let me know what you think. Do I love me a deity? The deity VO7U. I have the entire kit that comes with the boom arm and uh, the pop filter right now. I have it removed, but we can pop it in just to avoid all the plosives. And also it makes it look like a slightly beefier microphone. So this thing has a lot of really cool features. So first of all, latency free headphone monitoring with a headphone volume dial on the side. We have a gain dial on the side as well for the microphone. And it applies a hardware analog limiter. If you go above 50% on the gain for the microphone, that means that if you start to speak quieter, it's gonna be fine. But if you raise your voice, it's going to automatically you know, control for peaking and your auto level. So that's awesome because there it sounds natural. You know, you don't have to set anything up in the software. It's driverless, plug and play, works with Android, Mac, Windows, and even iPad apparently. This is a dynamic microphone and you can tell by the mount, you cannot position it to be like a condenser of re recording from the side like normal. So you have to speak into the top of the microphone. And I do like that structure that uh, is kind of, foolproof because for example, I forgot this was a dynamic microphone and I was trying to arrange it to speak onto the side, but I'm thinking, hold on a second, the frame doesn't let me do that. So that is pretty clever. There's an RGB ring at the bottom here that is useless. I cannot really see it. Maybe you guys can, but it's disabled by default. So it's a bit of a cleaner setup, but also once you plug it in, you don't know if this whole thing is on or not. You can of course mute the microphone and the ring illuminates in red. I do not like that button. You have to really press into it and I prefer the light tap on other microphones. But in terms of the vocal clarity, what do you guys think for this being a dynamic USB-C microphone? And also let's do a little bit of typing in the background to see how much of that background noise and compression it happens with the DAD, DAD VO7U. The thing that sells this microphone for me is that hardware analog limiter because uh, I love being able to you know, pump up the gain sensitivity so you can hear me clearly. But if I do raise my voice without moving back, it still, you know, controls everything just fine in terms of that volume. All right, next up, we have the HyperX Duocast. Regardless of how this thing sounds and how cool it looks with the RGB, this stand is absolutely ridiculous. It's so small, there's not enough height. And if you intended to use it in its sort of desk orientation, it's way too far away from you. You have to dial in the gain to be able to pick up your voice and that way you introduce a lot more room noise, you know? Luckily it has a boom arm mount so you can place it in proper orientation for a condenser microphone to be somewhat closer to your mouth off the surface. Uh, it does have a tap to mute functionality at the top. It's also capacitive, so a very light touch, touch. A very light tap will do the trick. When muted, it also disables the RGB and it doesn't go in red because you can set the RGB to red in different patterns. And this ring of illumination also has a few uh, interesting functionality. So when you adjust the gain, it gives you that green to red. So you know how far you are in the gain. And also it has two recording patterns. So cardioid and omnidirectional. So right now we are in cardioid and clicking the gain button. There's this interesting animation that extends in white that gives you that visual indication that you are now recording in the omnidirectional pattern. So everything around the microphone is picked up versus clicking it again to return back to cardioid has this inwards animation to let you know that you're back to cardioid pattern that is slightly more directed for vocals. It does have a built-in pop filter inside the body like previous HyperX microphones. And in terms of background compression with keyboard strokes, for example, you can hear it is a little bit 
you know, it doesn't mute them as much as a dynamic microphone would and other condensers. So yeah, this, I would lower the gain and kind of move in closer to the microphone in order to avoid, you know, picking up a lot of the room noise and other things in your environment. The Razer Siren V2X. So this one's a very tiny microphone. Again, a really tiny base. So if you put it on the desk somewhere, not only will it be picking up all the crap from your desk, but it's also way too far away from you. Luckily, you can unscrew it and put it on a boom arm. The Siren V2X is a condenser microphone. I do like that we have a mute switch at the front that lights up in green when you're recording and red when you're muted. We have a gain knob that has nice density but no visual indication on how hot you are on, on the sensitivity on the actual microphone. You can all obviously see it in the Synapse software or your recording software of choice. It is a USB-C connection at the back, but man, most of these microphones that are USB-C, except for the Blue Yeti X, have a very particular cable. So for example, I cannot use my Wave 3 cable with this microphone and vice versa, which is so frustrating. At $99, what do you guys think of the quality? Of course, you have to go through Synapse to enable analog limiter that uh, would prevent you from peaking. So you can you know, have some freedom in how loud you are. But in terms of setting up your own gain, for example, right now I'm peaking between minus 12 and minus six as before. So quality wise, I would say it's passable, but still it's $99. So let me know what you think. For keyboard strokes and all the background compression, it is a condenser microphone after all. So you have to really play around with sensitivity of the microphone and your room setup in order to avoid as much of that ambient pickup as possible. Then we have the slightly more upgraded version of the Siren V2 series. This is the V2 Pro. It's a dynamic microphone now, not a condenser. It has an additional volume wheel for your headphone monitoring. Still same gain dial, nice density, same mute functionality. Slightly different body so that you know it's not a condenser. So you cannot be speaking onto the side. You have to be speaking into the top of the microphone. And it also has uh, you know very tiny base. So if you do place this on your surface, and position the mic towards you and maybe add a little bit of the gain. This is a very bad way to record. So you definitely want to make sure you have this thing on a boom arm. On the boom arm, this is definitely more manageable. You can also enable the analog limiter to avoid peaking inside Synapse only, nothing on the microphone, unfortunately. For $50 more, what do you guys think of the sound quality for being dynamic versus the condenser? And also, let's see how it does with background compression with our keyboard strokes. This is also being dynamic, so I'm hoping that it will cancel out slightly more of it versus what we just heard with the condenser, the Siren V2X. The NZXT Capsule Mini is next. This one arrived late, that's why it's slightly a different setup. The thing is, it's also the cheapest microphone in this entire roundup at only $69. Because it's also the cheapest one, it is missing a few features. So the stand, for example, is way too short. You know, you really have to put it on arm to take advantage of what this thing can offer. The USB-C cable uh, is at the bottom, but you need to use the extender that is included to attach it to microphone arms like this NZXT one because it could not actually mount onto my other Elgato monitor arm or microphone arm because there's just not enough room at the bottom for me to connect the USB-C cable. Having to think about that is absolutely absurd. And we do have a headphone jack at the bottom for headphone latency free monitoring. But my issue here is that we do have this nice joystick control that has the tactility, but that wheel controls the volume of the headphones, not the actual gain of the microphone, which I also find absurd. Like, you know, it'd be nice to be able to click it twice to be able to go from gain control versus volume control, but no, you only have the option to press it once to mute the microphone and you do have the red illumination. So at least you know when it's muted. So from a usability point of view, I feel like they definitely missed out on giving us like right out of the box functionality. So you don't need to download cam software in order to adjust the gain of the microphone. Like that's absolutely ridiculous. But from a quality perspective, let me know what you think. And also let's do a little bit of microphone test like I have with the others. Uh, this is a condenser. So very likely not going to be canceling out much stuff in the background, but still it's a, a good test to hear how much is entering into this microphone. And I did adjust the gain in Audacity because I'm recording into that. At least there is uh, that option. And I'm at uh, only 44% on the gain without needing to peak. So I think it's stupid that we cannot adjust the gain on the actual microphone like we can with literally every other microphone in this roundup. Come on, the NZXT, this is not the way to go. This next microphone has the worst name out of everything, the Cougar Screamer X, my goodness. 
Uh, it's also the cheapest feeling microphone in this entire roundup. The entire body is kind of plasticky, something is rattling inside. And it's not that cheap at $150, you know? Luckily it has a USB-C connection, but you need to use the included 90 degree cable because when you mount it to a boom arm, there's not enough uh, distance for a regular USB-C cable to fit. So another weird obsession with brands trying to make sure to force you into using their own cable. We have four recording patterns. So kind of standard for, you know, your USB microphones like five, 10 years ago, but now I think cardioid or super cardioid should be like the default one. Don't need to include many more capsules to capture everything else. Uh, we do have a latency free headphone monitoring with a volume uh, level for your headphones. And we do have a gain dial as well. In terms of sound quality, I think also sounds like the, the least well balanced. It's kind of tinny. Uh, and even though it has this very, Kind of, I would say pretty useful base for a USB hub uh, that has uh, some RGB and stuff. This thing is also useless because it's way too low to the ground. You want to make sure that you're lifting the microphone away from the surface to avoid any pickup that is happening on your desk from your mouse, from your keyboard stuff. And this also being a condenser definitely is going to be picking up a lot of the keyboard uh, strokes and i'm right now recording in the cardioid pattern and that's uh, i would say the best one for this microphone anyway this thing also has noise reduction apparently it's a switch at the bottom and as you can hear it completely destroys your voice it's constantly trying to modulate it might do a good job of canceling out background keyboard strokes and everything in your environment like if it's super loud but the modulation of like trying to really compress to just your voice is not natural and is not easy to listen to. Also, it's in a really horrible location at the bottom, so very difficult to access. And also the headphone jack is right beside that USB-C port. When it's mounted on a boom arm, is absolutely inaccessible. The Blue Yeti X, the only reason it's in here is because we can see the live sensitivity around your gain dial. So that's nice. If you go into DLOs, you can tone it down a bit or depending on uh, how hot you'd like to record. But this thing is micro USB and it's probably not going to be a thing that I want to recommend because it's $160 right now in 2023. And I don't know if they're going to be hopefully fixing this USB connection soon with something a little bit more future proof like USB-C, but it's also the microphone that's really heavy. So putting it on the boom arm is very recommended, but then you need something sturdy and beefy in there to support this thing. In terms of sound quality toe, let me know what you think and doing a little bit of typing test. Yeah, it's a condenser microphone after all. So a lot of the stuff is not gonna be picked up uh, or will be picked up, but you have to be very close to the, the microphone in order for your voice to sound as best as it can. Another thing is I'm not a microphone expert and everything you just heard has been plug and play and go and that's probably not the right approach when it comes to using the microphone to its full potential because of EQ settings that you might experiment with to emphasize your proper vocals and that's why I asked my friend Epos Vox Addy for some help on giving us his opinion on like the best things to keep in mind and also his favorite microphones when it comes to streaming. Take it away. Choosing a microphone for streaming can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. My priorities tend to come down to flexibility for the type of streaming that I'm going to do. Be that sitting in one place gaming, therefore it's fine to have something that just kind of stays locked off in place or something that's a little bit more flexible for when I get up, move around, you know, do stuff on stream. Depends on what your workflow is. My second priority comes down to handling noise and background rejection. So. For that in mind, USB microphone wise, I was super impressed with the Sennheiser Profile USB mic and how well it handled handling noise in general. Like I was sitting there moving it around, pressing the microphone mute button and things like that, assuming you would hear it in the audio and it just never showed up. For XLR side of things, if you're looking in the cheaper realm, the brand new Earthworks SR117, it is more meant to be a stage mic, but for 200 bucks, you get basically zero handling noise lots of great sound rejection, and it still sounds pretty natural, all things considered, since it is meant to be like a musical microphone. However, if I'm doing more of my talk show kind of sit in one place or gaming stream kind of scenario, I may want something that just picks up the best qualities from my from, from my vocals. You know, I, 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 wanna, I wanna flex the vocal cords, as it were. For that, I tend to go for the larger diaphragm condenser microphones, something like the CAD E100S, the Warm WA14. These kinds of bigger XLR microphones allow you to really kind of pick up all of your warm frequencies and all of that at the sacrifice of a little bit of clarity, but you can EQ it a little bit. But these are gonna cost you a little bit. My 
final priority comes down to ease of setup. For my non-main setups, I pretty much always go with microphones that have an onboard DSP, digital signal processor, or some way to add effects to the chain. That way I can quickly set up an EQ, a compressor, those kinds of things to help normalize my audio, make me sound how I need to sound, and remove background noise. And for that, I'm either going with the PreSonus Revelator Dynamic Mic, as it does all of that audio processing on board, or I'm using the Elgato Wave USB Mic, which doesn't have a DSP built in, but the Wave Link software supports VST plugins, which allow you to run those kinds of processing plugins in real time on your audio, whether you're streaming or chatting in Discord, something like that. Wow, the streaming professor indeed. I've never heard of those microphones before, but definitely opens your eyes about the potential and the experimentation that you should probably be playing around with when it comes to your new microphone within whatever software that is available to you. Now, based on vocals alone, I'm definitely keeping the Wave 3, the Blue Amber, but now a few microphones are going to be entering into my <laughs> microphone arsenal. The Deity VO7, just I love the, the sound of the dynamic microphone, even though it's not as sound uh, reducing, you know, for anything that's happening in the background, like the keyboard strokes were, were more audible than the Blue Amber, which is probably why I love the Blue Amber so much, because it's even, it's a condenser cardioid microphone, but it has that beautiful separation of what's happening behind it versus in the front. Some surprising microphones like the Wave DX, for example, it's a dynamic microphone that sounds like a condenser because of how much sound it's picking up from behind it, even though it's, again, a cardioid pattern. After hearing back the Blue Sona, even so I said it sounds a little dark for my voice. I actually kind of prefer it. I'm kind of going into that mood of kind of being on a slightly less brighter side, but also the HyperX Procast. This thing sounds awesome. So I do agree with both Mike's and Eber's uh, like this uh, decision of like picking this microphone even without knowing because it sounds clear, it sounds bassy and it's a condenser. So. Uh, all the high frequencies and all the clarity is really good in terms of that resolution. Also, I'm quite surprised at how the Siren V2X performed in the clarity side of things on the condenser microphone, even though it doesn't have good sound suppression from the background. The clarity is absolutely awesome for a condenser microphone, which is probably why Eber chose it in his top three in that blind test. And also, I was not expected to be disappointed by the Elgato Wave DX. I just sounds... Two, there's nothing on the low end. You know, for my voice, it doesn't really work. And also the Biodynamics M70 Pro X also kind of has that harsh mentality without too much texture on the low end. So maybe for some very clear vocals, it's awesome. But uh, for my voice, those two microphones don't work. And the question is, which microphone sound the best to your ears? Let me know in the comments. I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. All the microphones will be listed in the description below. I'll talk to you in the next video.